Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Farrell, Senior Investigator in the Research Division of the Cooper Institute. This paper, Moderate to High Levels of Cardiorespiratory Fitness, Attenuate the Effects of Triglyceride to HDL Cholesterol Ratio on Coronary Heart Disease Mortality in Men, will be published in the December issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. So first, a little overview. We all know that LDL cholesterol is atherogenic, and that the lower the LDL cholesterol level, the better. However, there are many different types of LDL, and some of these subtypes are not nearly as atherogenic as others. So we often talk about LDL particle size for determining risk of developing cardiovascular disease. So in this slide, we just have a very simplistic view showing that LDL size exists on a continuum. On the left-hand side of the slide, we see the highly atherogenic, small, dense LDL particles, and on the right-hand side, the more innocuous, large, buoyant, or fluffy LDL particles, which again are much less atherogenic. And many labs uh, choose not to measure LDL particle size because it's very expensive at the current time. But about 20 years ago or so, we found that the ratio between fasting triglyceride level and HDL cholesterol level provides a pretty good proxy for LDL particle size in that the higher the triglyceride to HDL ratio, the more likely we are to have the more small and dense atherogenic LDL particle size. So here we'll do two examples of triglyceride to HDL ratio. In patient number one, they have a triglyceride value of 60 and an HDL of 80. So to calculate the ratio, we simply take the triglyceride value and divide it by the HDL value. And in this example, we get a ratio of 0.75, which is a very, very good ratio, uh, indicating this patient likely has the more large and buoyant, more innocuous LDL particle size, not very atherogenic. In the second example, the patient has a triglyceride level of 300 with an HDL of 30. This gives us a triglyceride to HDL ratio of 10, which is very, very poor, high-risk ratio, it's very likely that this patient has the more small, dense, atherogenic LDL particle size. Now, in addition to being a pretty good proxy for LDL particle size, the ratio also is a good proxy for insulin resistance. And we all know that being insulin resistant is in the causal pathway for not only metabolic syndrome, but also prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, and in some cases, hypertension. So the higher the ratio, the greater the amount of insulin resistance that's present. Also, we've known for some time that moderate to high levels of cardiorespiratory fitness have a very powerful and beneficial effect on things like blood triglyceride, HDL levels, LDL particle size, and insulin resistance. So with that as an overview, we decided to look at the individual and joint associations among these variables. We selected a sample of 40,269 men <clears throat> with no personal history of cardiovascular disease who were given a comprehensive exam in the Cooper Clinic, Dallas, Texas. This included fasting blood work as well as a maximal treadmill exercise test to measure cardiorespiratory fitness. We divided the men into cardiorespiratory fitness quintiles based on their age as well as divided them into triglyceride to HDL quartiles we followed the men for an average of 16.6 years, during which time 556 deaths occurred from coronary heart disease. And in this slide, we're going to take a look at cardiorespiratory fitness level on the x-axis and risk of dying from coronary heart disease on the y-axis. So using the highly fit men as a referent, those are men that scored in the fourth and fifth quintile, we see that moderately fit men had a hazard ratio of 1.34 and low fit men a hazard ratio of nearly 3. That P for trend was highly significant. We did a similar analysis now for triglyceride to HDL ratio. We divided the men up into quartiles, so reading from left to right, using men in the first quartile as the referent, we see a correspondingly higher rate of mortality as triglyceride to HDL ratio quartile increased. 
and the PFER trend was also significant. Those results so far are not terribly surprising. The novel thing about this study is we, we decided to look at the joint associations among all of these variables. So on the x-axis in this slide, we have the triglyceride to HDL ratio, and then on the y-axis, we have the adjusted risk of dying from coronary heart disease. So the more favorable ratios are on the left, and the more risky ratios are on the right. And when we bring these bars up, the higher the bars, the higher the risk was of dying from coronary heart disease. So using highly fit men with a low triglyceride to HDL ratio as a referent, we see that moderately fit men and low fit men had higher risk of dying from coronary heart disease, despite the fact that they had a really good looking triglyceride to HDL ratio. We're going to see the same trend in the remaining three quartiles of triglyceride to HDL ratio. The highest fit men in each quartile have the lowest risk of dying, moderately fit men a somewhat higher risk of dying, and low fit men the highest risk of dying from coronary heart disease. And in each case, the PFER trend within each triglyceride to HDL ratio category was highly significant. So in conclusion, a few things. First of all, just to reinforce that the triglyceride to HDL ratio is a proxy not only for LDL particle size, but also for insulin resistance. It's very easy to calculate. In this study, we were able to show that both cardiorespiratory fitness and the triglyceride to HDL ratio were each significantly and independently predictive of coronary heart disease mortality in a large group of apparently healthy men. The more important finding and the more novel finding is that within each category of triglyceride to HDL ratio, moderate to high levels of fitness provided significant protection from coronary heart disease mortality. So in essence, this data is really showing us that having a moderate to high level of fitness gives us some protection from coronary heart disease mortality that's somewhat independent of LDL particle size and insulin resistance. So in order to provide a more accurate determination of coronary heart disease risk, all clinicians are strongly encouraged to measure or at least attempt to estimate cardiorespiratory fitness in their patients. And this goes along well with the American Heart Association scientific advisory statement that was published in circulation back in 2016. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.